because I see in simultaneity, I can very, very clearly see the emergence. It's almost like um, you can imagine seeds that have been planted and now they're beginning to, they've been germinating. Hi everyone, I'm Seba and I had two NDE experiences which I'm going to share with you today. So the first NDE that I experienced was, um, a, you could say a drowning or a near drowning. I um, got caught in a riptide and I was um, fighting very ferociously to try to free myself from this riptide. I, um, I was caught by surprise. It really took me way past the shore very quickly. And I was um, fighting and fighting to get back. And at one point, I actually got almost back to the shore and I got my foot pretty well dug into the sand and I got ripped right back out again. And it was at that point that I really started to um, panic and go into full blown terror because I realized that um, this was probably gonna be a very serious situation. I was hyperventilating, I had no strength left at all. And I just was at my last uh, moment of um, thinking of how I'm gonna get out of this. And all of a sudden, I heard a voice that felt like kind of emerged from within me, but it, it wasn't me. And it said, it's going to be, um, it just said, it's not going to be a bad death. And that it's probably going to be about 30 seconds. And then you'll be, you'll be dead. It'll be over. And I felt at that moment, incredible tranquility and calm. Um, I had no fear at all of drowning, which if you had asked me any time before that about drowning, it would have, you know, I would have felt like that would have been the worst, one of the worst deaths possible. But at that moment, there was no fear. I felt very calm, very tranquil. I didn't feel like I needed to fight at all anymore. I was in complete acceptance of my, of my death. And from that point, the next thing I remember at all was that I was suddenly standing again, facing the shore in water that was about knee deep. And I have no recollection at all um, as to how I got there, none at all. It, it just is like, there's nothing in between that time. Um, so I don't know, but What's really significant about um, this transition from where I was in the water, which was this complete acceptance in a very tranquil, peaceful way of my death, is that when I was standing looking at the shore, firstly, I noticed something very different, which is that everything looked incredibly beautiful in the sense, I mean, it was beautiful anyway, I was, I was in a tropical jungle and it was very beautiful, but it was so much more profoundly beautiful. It's really hard to describe it. And I had this same voice arise from within me that was kind of me, but not me. And it said, I love everyone and everyone loves me. And it was this feeling of, um, I, I don't think we can describe it here. It was the most complete um, feeling of feeling loved and giving love simultaneously. It was a complete reciprocity. There was total exchange of love, but it wasn't like a, a personal love that we would think of here in this reality. It was transcendental. I, I There aren't really any words for it, but it was the most um, profound feeling you could ever imagine. Um, it was quite incredible. And at the same time, I'm still wondering if I'm dead or alive <laughs> because I, I honestly didn't know 
what was happening. So I walked to my towel on the beach and I was still hyperventilating pretty badly at this point. Um, so my body had clearly gone through something, <laughs> but I felt really, I mean, at complete peace and this just profound love was, you know, just ubiquitous. I, I can't really describe it. So I sat down and I grabbed a handful of sand just to see, you know, am I alive or, or am I dead? Did I die? And I could feel the sand and I, I thought, okay, well, I guess I'm, I'm still alive. And uh, I, my body, I got my breathing calmed down and I was, I was actually on another little, I was off the coast of Panama. I was traveling on a holiday with my sister. And so I had to take a little boat back to meet her. And there wasn't anyone really on the beach, just a, a mother daughter who were out surfing. And so we caught the same little boat back and uh, I was having a conversation with the mother and it turned out she was a scientist. Um, who was there in Panama studying um, an ant, this leaf uh, eater ant. And what was really interesting about what was happening with me, because I was very clearly in some kind of um, altered state or some sort of incredibly, I would call it more of an expanded state because I didn't feel, I felt completely grounded and completely present. In fact, more present than um, I think I'd, I'd ever felt in my entire life. But I was clearly in some sort of very expanded state of awareness. And the reason I say that is that I was having this conversation with her and she was describing to me her, her study and what she was doing. And I had the sense of understanding her completely, even though, I had very uh, somewhat of a science background at university, but it, it, I certainly didn't have a degree in science. And I, I noticed that was a really interesting thing that I, I and very with tremendous clarity what she was speaking about. And this sounds incredibly strange, but it was almost as if I could converse with her as I was a colleague rather than um, coming from a place of, of having no context or reference to her science. And I remember thinking that was a little bit um, different, uh, that I sort of had this just very heightened state of awareness. And I almost want to call it an omniscience. And I know, of course, we can't know omniscience. Um, and it's a paradox, but I had the sense of this vast, capacity for awareness, almost as if I had tapped into, you know, some sort of, you know, the Akasha or something very vast and um, was able to really understand clearly things that I hadn't studied or didn't have reference to. And I noticed that was very interesting. And I was still in this very profound state of, of loving um, being as well. And so I get back to the place where I'm going to be waiting for my sister. And this state sort of is continuing. And I'm beginning now to think, you know, what, what's happening? This, this feels, this is so, you know, I... I remember on the beach, I had this thought of, wow, I think I should be really upset <laughs> because I, I almost died. I got caught in a riptide. I mean, it was, it was terrifying. I, I was in a state of terror. And yet when I arrived back on the beach, I felt really great, really wonderful. I had no fear. No, I wasn't upset at all about the trauma. And I'm just thinking like, that seems interesting that I'm not feeling strange about this. And so I was in this sort of state of inquiry about, you know, wow, what, what really is going on here? And as I asked that question, I kind of simultaneously felt the need to look up and, and then heard this voice and saw in the sky, this immense portal. Um, it was just this huge 
opening in, in the sky. And from that portal, this really kind of booming, it wasn't loud. This is another one that's really hard to describe. It was just a very present, um, profound um, voice that said, it just is. And I, I was thinking, I don't even, what does that mean? It just is. I, I, I didn't understand that at all. And as I was thinking that, it said it again, it just is. And in that moment, I had this tremendous clarity, but it wasn't a, a cognitive clarity. It was just a sensed understanding of what that meant. Um, and it sounds, it's a really, it sounds very simplified. It just is. But of course, to our human psyche, that's quite complex because, you know, we're, we have a lot of complexity in our lives. And so it was a very interesting, another paradox that I encountered. And it took me a long time after that to, to arrive cognitively at a place of what that means. But at the, in that moment, I had tremendous clarity about it. And so as I was sitting waiting for my sister, this very um, different expanded awareness was, um, I was noticing a lot of very different things as I was waiting for her. For example, I was getting tremendous um, information just pouring in from this, um, again, the source that I am describing, this vast sort of Akashic source about the human body and why we get uh, sick and why and how we age. Um, it was very interesting. And then at the same time, I was noticing, I was in a, a pretty touristic area. And so there were a lot of families that were walking by. And I noticed that the, the kids were really almost just like identical patterns of the parents. And another thing that was really strange was that everyone felt like they were behind this very thick plexiglass is the only way I can think of to describe it because they were there very clearly. I could see them very clearly, but I couldn't feel them. It was like they were gone, like, like, um, like their essence wasn't there. I, I could see that they were physically there, but it seemed mentally they were, they were not present. It was a very, very, um, a bit disturbing actually. And a bit revealing as well <laughs> um, about, I think, our state of over-mentalization and the clarity that's, that's possible from the state that I was in. And I could just see so clearly how these patterns of um, disease and aging sort of, um, they're from the greater field and they sort of, our, our body has tremendous clarity and wholeness and wellness at all times. And these um, ideologies is really the only way I can think of to express them. These patterns move through our body and then our body sort of becomes that. So it sort of becomes the illness or it becomes the aging process. And so I, I understood very clearly in that moment that the body is truly always holistic and always clear and always well and it's really these um, meta patterns these metamorphic um, or epigenetic patterns that move through our bodies and then and then express physically through us and so that was sort of this tremendous clarity that i received um, from from this near-death experience the second NDE was um, quite different in the way that it unfolded, but uh, very similar in the, in the way that I felt the incredible love and the peace was very, very much the same. So the second NDE was, um, as I understand it, was perhaps severe dehydration. It could have also been 
a heat stroke or a combination of the two. So I had been, I was living up in the mountains and I had been out hiking all day long and I hadn't really had a lot to eat or drink. I wasn't really planning on um, being out for as long as I was. I, I ended up staying out the entire day and I, it was pretty cold outside. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. It was pretty chilly up where I was living. I was at about 8,000 feet up in the mountains so I was really bundled up. I had a lot of wool on, a big wool hat, big wool sweater, really big boots. And I got back to the cabin where I was living. And I was with um, my boyfriend at the time. And he made this really big fire in the fireplace. We had a big fireplace with a hearth because that was how we warmed our cabin. And I would always sit uh, on the hearth to warm up. And I did the same that evening. I sat there to warm up and I kept everything on, even my hat, because I was feeling a little bit chilly. I was, it was kind of cold and wet outside. And so I just kept everything on and I felt totally fine. It felt really great to be sitting there by the fire and I was just chatting with him and we were just enjoying our time. And I think I was there about two hours or so. I, I don't really remember. But I never took anything off because I, I never felt overheated. I, I just felt very ambient, very warm. And he went into the kitchen to start preparing dinner. And around that time, all of a sudden, I my physical body felt terrible. It just kind of it felt like it came out of nowhere. It happened really fast. And I remember thinking, oh, this is, this feels really strange, and really bad. Uh, it felt kind of beyond, uh, it's, this is hard to explain, but I could tell it was ominous, like something really terrible was happening. And it was a little one room cabin and there was a couch kind of close to me. And that, that same voice that had emerged through me in the ocean came through again with this, just this really neutral clarity. And it just said, if you go lay on that couch, you will not get up. Um, the implication being that, that I was gonna die if I laid on that couch, if I laid down. And I just thought, oh, this is something's really, something's terrible is about to happen. And so uh, my boyfriend was across the room in the kitchen area and there was a little table and a, ch a couple of chairs there. And I thought, I just have to get across to that chair and get his attention and let him know what's happening. And I kind of just got across and got into that chair and I told him, I said, I think I'm gonna faint. But it didn't really feel like I was gonna faint. It felt way worse than that. It didn't just feel like I was gonna, I didn't just feel a little bit woozy, it felt, terrible very ominous and so I got his attention and when he looked over at me I could see that he was surprised I mean clearly I looked something was going on and he came over and he sort of felt my back and he's like my god you're burning up and so we just kind of started pulling all my layers off getting all that wool off and um, I think I, I was thinking about this later I guess wool really kind of keeps heat in um, and I, I guess I didn't realize it because it's a natural um, fiber and so as I was sitting by the fire I must have been getting extremely overheated and really dehydrated without realizing it so I must have pushed my body to this terrible point and so we're pulling off all these layers and I asked her can you get me some water and some honey I was trying to stay conscious because I had the most terrible feeling about what was about to happen. I was really fighting to stay conscious. And I ate the honey and drank the water and it, it, just, it was too late. And I told him, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna lose consciousness. And he stood in front of me and he's like, it's okay, if you, you, know, if you fall, I'm gonna catch you. And right as he was saying that, I, you know, the, the darkness just kind of closed in. And I remember falling forward and then, um, you know, we, I had a completely different experience than he had. So in my, what happened for me is that all of the sudden, 
I am flying like warp speed moving and I'm spinning completely out of control. Just felt like um, the only thing I can relate it to is, uh, I don't know if you've seen the movie Gravity, but I guess the character loses connection with her ship and she's in outer space and she's just spinning. And that's what it felt like. I just, it was the most bizarre sensation ever spinning out of control. And simultaneously, as I was moving at just this warp speed, I was moving through this grid. It was just incredibly bright, bright, what I would call neon colors, but they were way brighter than anything I think we would we would see here or um, call me on here, but it was distinctly a very much a grid. And I just, I remember thinking like, what is happening? I, this is, I was terrified. I was so confused. I was spinning and I just, I couldn't get myself right to it. I, I, I didn't feel like I had a physical form but it felt like I needed to be righted, oriented. I, I just remember thinking I can't orient myself and what is happening and what is this grid and where am I? I just kept asking over and over, you know, where am I? And then I sort of passed through this grid and I ended up in this inky, inky black. It, it just was a, a blackness you cannot even describe, I don't even know if it exists here on this planet, but it felt velvety, soft and rich. It was just this warm, I felt cocooned. Um, the space itself, which it wasn't a space. And in fact, it just felt infinite. Um, I remember thinking like just this, I could sense this just vast infinite space and then simultaneously, I felt very cocooned and it felt so soft. And I had that same feeling of this profound love. It was just, um, I don't think we can, I don't know if we can experience that as humans living in this separation um, because it's just so incredibly whole and complete. And also I remember noticing this incredible sentience. So you would, you know, imagine this, this incredible darkness would be cold and uh, disconnected. And I actually felt completely connected and, this, and aware of this incredible, profound sentience and intelligence, or I don't know what you could call it, but it was just, it felt very aware and loving and warm. And so I had, you know, I felt much more tranquil. I felt very peaceful. Um, I wasn't feeling afraid or terrified anymore. And then all of a sudden I kind of drifted over and uh, became aware of three beings. And they were enormous. They were enormous. I remember having to kind of look up which is strange because I I didn't feel like I had a physical form I'm, I didn't there was no awareness of a physical body at all just but somehow I had an orientation and uh, we were engaged in some kind of a conversation there weren't any words it was telepathic but I have no idea what was being said and I, I have no recall of what was being said. And I've, I've even tried through hypnotherapy to recall that conversation and um, I'm just not able to recall it, which I'm guessing is for a reason, you know, but I was in this conversation with them and the conversation felt pretty, it, it had a, they were neutral. It wasn't um, any sort of it wasn't a, like a life review. It didn't feel like that. It felt um, like a, not a directive, but a, a kind of like a conversation if I had to guess at it, sort of here's what, you know, your life path needs to become and, and here's what, you know, how things need to go is, is the sense that I get from it. It was sort of, a, I just remember feeling kind of like 
on the receiving end of a kind of a directional um, conversation, if you will. Uh, there was no guilt or shame. I had no sense of any of that. It felt that just kind of very neutral. They felt very neutral, but um, also very directive simultaneously, which is, I know, a little bit contradictory, but um, and then as I was speaking with them, I heard this, it was like a sound. Um, and I always kind of jokingly call it the, the Charlie Brown, the, our cartoon character in the United States that um, has this on the telephone, the adult voices kind of go wah wah. And it was sort of like that. It was this um, unintelligible, sound and uh, I sort of looked, at, uh, it got my attention and I turned my focus toward it. And I didn't know at the time, I didn't have any sort of awareness of what I was looking at, but in recall, I can see that I was looking at our planet, at the earth. And it was just the brightest, most amazing, um, blue in this inky black and I could see the white atmosphere around it um, but at the time I I didn't understand it as earth I, there wasn't any sort of knowing of of me as a as a person or personality I didn't have any connection to um, what had happened to me or how I had gotten there so um I didn't understand what I was seeing, um, but in recall, I, I know that it was the earth and I turned back and started conversing again with the beings. And then I heard this same sound again and I turned again and saw the planet. Um, it was still the same kind of not, under, not knowing or connecting with what that sound was. I turned back, was still conversing with the beings. And then the third time, there was a clear Seba, my name, but I still didn't connect that with who, you know, that being me, um, no notion of, of what or who that was. But as I heard that, that word Seba, I went warp speed back into, I was sort of looking at this, this object, which I now understand was my, my body. I uh, didn't know what it was or what a body was. It was just no awareness of being a person. Um, nothing like that seemed to be part of what was happening. But I, I remember just kind of flying back into this body and I could see the backs of my eyelids, although at the time I didn't you know, have any awareness of what that was. And then the next thing I know, I'm just looking and there's um I want to say a person of course it was my my boyfriend but I didn't there was no recognition of of what a person was or even of who that was but I remember noting that this being in front of me had this really terrible like look of terror just fear on his face and I was still feeling pretty confused. I still didn't know where I was or what was happening. And so the first question I asked was, where am I? And he said, you're at home. And I was like, oh, okay. I, that still didn't really register. I, I still didn't know what home was or that I was a person. And I kind of started looking around and the environment felt very strange. And then it sort of dawned on me, I'm on the floor. That's why everything's looking strange. I'm looking at the bottom of, of cabinets and it all felt really strange. And then I said, you know, I, I want to sit up. And he was like, wow, are you sure? And I remember thinking, yeah, why? Why is I, he looked really kind of um, surprised by that question, but I felt really great. In fact, I felt still had this tremendous sense of um, 
warmth. Oh, and in fact, I, I forgot this really important um, part of it as I was laying there and I asked where I was, he asked me, how are you feeling? And I said, perfect, <laughs> which was a, a kind of an interesting reply. I mean, I, I felt perfect, which I guess for him was really strange because of what had just happened. But I felt so warm. I felt like I was floating on a cloud. I didn't even feel like I was connected to the ground where I was laying. Um, which is really strange because up in the mountains, it was really cold and the floor was cement. So I had all my layers up at that time and it would have been normally a, a pretty cold experience to be laying there. And it felt like I wasn't even connected to the floor. It felt like I was floating in a cloud and my body felt perfect. Like it, it, it's, I can't even describe it. And so I began to sit up and then as I was sitting up, I realized, oh yeah, something is, is a little bit strange in the body. It, I felt completely fine, but as I was sitting up, I looked down and my, my hands were curled up um, in the way of someone who experiences kind of a neurological episode. And I remember thinking, wow, that is really weird. Um, that my hands look like that. And as I continued to sit up, I noticed that um, it felt like I was kind of animating as I sat up and I looked down at the rest of my body and it looked like um, it wasn't there, like, like there wasn't any animation there. Like it looked quite like a dead body. And as I, as I was sitting up, it just, I kind of animated. It was, it was a very, very strange experience, but I felt completely fine. Um, I had tons of energy, tons of vitality. I could have uh, done anything in that moment. And I, I stood up very easily and my boyfriend was, you know, expressing a lot of surprise about this. And of course I still didn't know what had happened exactly but at that point i was starting to connect with um you know the fact that something very extreme had happened and so we went and sat down and that's when he told me he said you had a, a grand mal seizure and then you you just you know hit the ground and your eyes stopped tracking you stopped breathing i couldn't find a pulse i didn't feel like you had a heartbeat it's like you died and at that point, he just started to sob. And I thought, oh my gosh, what, what was that? I, it was, I didn't even know what to think about that. Um, you know, I, I, was, I couldn't really even process that, but I could see clearly something terrible. I mean, he was really distraught, really sobbing. And um, later, once he kind of got, calmed down and we were talking a little bit more about it he said you know it was it was really so strange when you kind of came back he said you were just looking at me so that there was no transition from you being dead to just being there he said you were just looking at me and he said another kind of strange thing. Um, he spoke in terms of light. He's a photographer and he said, you looked like you were lit from the inside. He said it was like kind of like a 360 degree lighting. Um, and he said, you also looked like you were about 20, which is really interesting because I was um, around 48 at the time. <laughs> so uh, clearly that was a, a significant change in my appearance, um, you know, which obviously it didn't last, but something about that energy of, of this place, you know, the, what happens, you know, when we, I guess, become energy bodies had, had followed through into the physical body, um, which is, I think, really an interesting um, thing and 
Yeah. So, and he, he used this term salon fresh, which I don't know where, why he was using that. I guess it was his way of it describing how I looked, but he said, you know, everything looked incredibly, he said, you look like you had just like come out of a salon. Um, which given what had happened seems <laughs> quite a contrast. Um, and so I, I thought that was something very extraordinary to note um, about that experience. But um, yeah, that was, that was the second uh, NDE. Yeah, so thank you. So you oh, will please. the two opinion uh, related or have anything like the same thing piece together? So, say that again one, one more time. Do you feel do you feel to Andy have the same thing? The same like relay together? Ah, I see. Um the NDEs they feel very different in their um, you know, the way they happened and of course the experience of you know what transpired feels very different in characteristic, but I felt the same thing through both, which was this, you know, profound state of expanded awareness, um, this love, which uh, we can't really put into words here in this experience or this reality, I don't know if they're connected in any greater sense. Um, I would, I would venture to say yes. I, I think it's quite interesting for someone to have one NDE, let alone two. So I would imagine there's something there um, about yeah, about those two experiences being connected. Yeah, I'm not, I couldn't say exactly what, but it has definitely affected my life profoundly. The first one affected my, my reality very, very um, profoundly. I, I was never the same person from that moment onward. Um, I was always really different, um, even as a kid. I was a, a very different person. And what happened after that first NDE was that I, I could never really be part of society again. I could never really be part of that construct again. And then after the second NDE, that became much more part of who I am as a human. I, I, I can now see the whole construct or the illusion or the illusory overlay of, of all these patterns and indoctrinations that we have. So perhaps the connection was to make that for me here more of a reality. Um, yeah, I don't know for sure, but that could be the connection is that I, now I, I can really, and that second one has been 10 years. So it was 20 years ago, the first one, and almost 10 years ago, the second one. So my life has, of course, become very, very different from the ordinary person, I would say. In terms of the future of humanity, I'm personally feeling very excited and elated. And I don't mean to bypass what's happening now because it's so extremely um, disturbing what we're moving through. There's just so much pain and um, uh, tyranny and destruction that's happening right now. And the reason that I'm saying I'm feeling very elated and excited is that because I see in simultaneity, I can very, very clearly see the emergence. It's almost like um, you can imagine seeds that have been planted and now they're beginning to, they've been germinating, you know, in, in a, an arena that we can't see, of course, underground. 
but I can see them sprouting and moving up and through. I can see the ideologies changing. Um, I can see it and, and feel it. I think part of what's really important um, for me in this message is the sensory awareness, which is kind of what bridges, you could call it heart and mind, is the sensing um, of this new reality. And I can sense it very, very strongly. In fact, I can sense that it has already completely emerged and has already changed this, um, this kind of dark element that has been part of our paradigm for a long time. I see that as already having passed, though I know we're still living, many people are still in tremendous suffering, but it has already passed and it is already gone. And I can see now um, the emergence of this new future, which is, um, I mean, I could cry <laughs> seeing how beautiful 